Hi, welcome or welcome back to our R for Beginners playlist. In today's video, we're going to talk about functions. So what are functions? Well, functions are reusable pieces or blocks of code that perform a defined task. So they're most useful when you need to repeat tasks. Think about hand washing your clothes one by one versus how much easier it is to use a washing machine. So functions have a similar effect. In this section, we will learn how to define and call functions. So the process of creating a function is referred to as defining a function, while using a function is referred to as calling a function. We'll also cover how to pass arguments to functions, how to store the results in variables, and lastly, we will look at built-in functions. So with washing machines, you need to make or buy one before you can use it, right? So it's the same with functions. You need to define a function before you can call it. So the first thing we're gonna do is learn how to define a function. All right, so to define a function, we need the following syntax. I'm just going to write it down here. Write the word function and then parenthesis and then a curly bracket. So I'm just going to hit enter twice so we can have some space and then I'll do the closed curly bracket. So this is part of the function that always stays the same. That should always be exactly as I typed it. But inside this parenthesis, you have, I'll just name it here, functions body. So this is going to be all the code that your function needs to run. So you don't write the function's body here, it's just you fill that in with all the code that you need. But um, as is, uh, with a function not being assigned to a variable, we can't really reuse it. So what we're gonna do is assign this to a variable. So it's the same as um, what we learned a couple of videos ago. We have the assignment operator, and then I'm just going to name our variable the function's name. So this is complete if your function doesn't take any arguments. But if it does take arguments, then inside the parenthesis there, you could have different arguments. So we've got two or I guess multiple arguments in here, and they're all separated by a comma. So if you like math, uh, a lot of this is probably familiar to you because functions in math are pretty similar to functions in programming here. You probably know what arguments are. But for everybody else, uh, let's talk about arguments. So arguments are values or data that a function can take. And in more technical terms, arguments are inputs that can be passed to a function. So as we've seen, functions can have no arguments or they can have multiple arguments. You just have to separate them by a comma here. So that's most of what you need to know about defining a function. So let's see an example. I'll add an R chunk here. Here we go. And I'll just put a comment to say definition, just so we know what we're doing. <laughs> and I'm going to create the power function, which exponentiates the number that you give it. So I'll simply name it power and I'll variable assignment and function then parentheses. So we are going to give this function something. We're going to give it arguments. So I'll name those arguments. We will have the base number and the exponent. So those two arguments. And then we'll have our curly brackets and I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard so we can get some space there. And we will have base and the exponentiation sign and then exponent. So that's our function here. And let's run it. And we see it in the environment now. It's been created and it says it's a function with these two arguments, base and exponent. So in this function, we've defined these two arguments, base and exponent. So they actually just placeholder variables in here. You get to fill them in when you call this function. And that's our next step. Let's uh, call this function. So to call a function, you just need to type the function's name and then parenthesis. 
So if we don't have any arguments, we're done. That's it. You just write that, run, and you're good. But if we do have arguments, then you have to put in the data inside the parentheses. So let's say data one, data two, and so on and so forth, right? So when you write it like this, R is going to assume that data one is supposed to be put into argument one and data two into argument two. So it uh, keeps that order there. But if you don't want that to be the case, and sometimes it's like so many arguments and you don't exactly want to remember the order, you just know that this is, this is supposed to be that. What you can do, I'm just going to copy and paste this underneath so we can see the difference. What you can do is say arg1 is going to be replaced by data1 and arg2 is going to be replaced by data2 and so on and, and so forth. And you can even like go here and have argument2 here instead and argument1, the order doesn't matter here because you're actually specifying that this data is going to be passed to this argument. So yeah, let's uh, see an example with our power function. We we'll actually need to add an R chunk here again. Right, perfect. So let's try power two and three. So this is two to the power three, so that should give us eight. Yep, great, gives us eight here. And let's do power maybe three and two to see that it actually maintains that order. So this should be three to the power two, which is nine. So we should get eight and nine. I'll just scroll up a little bit here, All right? Eight and nine. And let's try the other syntax here. So power and we'll say base is equal to two and exponent is equal to uh what do we have here <laughs> it's covering it sorry uh three there we go and let's try it again i'll just actually copy and ah, no it's okay i'll type it again power and then instead we'll say exponent is equal to three and base is equal to two this should give us the same value as this and also this. So we should have eight, nine, eight, eight. And let's run it. Perfect. This is most of what you need to know about defining and calling functions, but there's still a couple of things that we should discuss. So number one, notice that we got all of this output from our functions. So all functions return data or a value to us. And the default is whatever the last expression is in that function body, that's what it's going to return. And for us, we just have one expression, so that's what we're gonna get. We're gonna get our base to the power of our exponent here as defined in our function. So if a function returns values or data, then we can also store those values or data in a variable so we can use them. Because right now we're just displaying them to the screen, but what if I need to do like a lot more with them? So let's do just that. We'll add an R chunk again, and we're going to create a variable. Let's name it two squared, and we'll assign it uh, power course that's going to be 2 to the power 2 and if we run that we'll see from our global environment that we now have 2 squared as 4 and we can use that 2 squared in whatever way that we want you know we've talked about variables so I won't really go into detail on that one but besides just storing it in a variable you can use the function as is so I'll add another R chunk here and I'll just copy this because I'm a bit lazy. We say power to the power two, and then we'll also multiply that by two. We should get eight. Yeah, perfect. So we can still use this as a number as well. He's going to first evaluate this power function and get a four, and then that's gonna be four times two. So there's also a little bit more that we should learn about arguments. So the first thing is default arguments. 
I'm just going to actually delete this, uh, just highlight it and delete and scroll back up. So in our power function, we put in the same number of arguments as they are in our function definition. And that's what you should generally do because otherwise it's going to give you an error except for the case when you have default arguments. So let's just see this error first before we, we learn about default arguments. So we've got power and we'll just say two here. Let's run it. And it says error in power two, the argument exponent is missing with no default. So let's create a default value for exponent. I'll just go down and we'll add another R chunk. And I'm just going to, oh, that does not help. We go back up here and we're going to copy this and paste it down here. So it's a very simple, simple add. All you're going to do is to go to your exponent uh, argument here inside function and then we'll say equal and we'll set a default value. So I'm just going to put two here. So it always just squares it and that's it. Let's run it so we can overwrite the power function that we just made. And if you go to the global environment here, you see that it says base and then it says exponent equal two. So we now have a default value for it. If we run, I uh, have to add another R chunk. If we now run power, and then two, I'll just scroll up so we can see, or scroll down, <laughs> so we can see uh, what the output is. And let's run it, and it works. We've got four because the default exponent value is now in there, and that's two, so it's going to be two to the power two. And even if you don't wanna use the default argument, you can just specify that argument, so I'll, override the exponent with four and that should give us 16. So either way, default value, you can have the ones that are required or you can have all of them and override all the defaults. All right, so there's just one more note on arguments. So functions, uh, again, because they return values to us, you can use functions as arguments to other functions. So we've only made one function here and we add an example with just that function. So I'll add an R chunk and scroll down a little bit. So we'll have power and in brackets, uh, we're just going to keep the default. But in here we'll say power again and we'll say two and four. So this power function is our argument to this outer power function. And that should work because it's going to first evaluate the inner power function, and that's going to be 16. And then the outer one, which would be power 16, and that should be 16 to the power two, and that's 300 or something. I uh, will see. <laughs> oh, I was so wrong, 256, wow. But um, now you know like, quite a bit about defining and calling functions, which is awesome, but you don't always have to define your own functions. That's a good thing. That's a good thing because the best code is always, always the code that someone else wrote. So R has a lot of these built-in functions for us that we can use without having to actually create them. So that's our next topic, built-in functions. So built-in functions are functions that have already been defined within R. So since these built-in functions are already defined, we just need to call them. It's like the best thing ever. So uh, one example is the mean function. So let's, uh, let's see that in action. I'll add an R chunk and it's named min and we have to add a couple numbers, so I'll do two and four. So this mean function returns the average of the arguments that you give it. And it's very common in statistics because you have to find the average of a lot of different things. And in turn, it's also very common in data science. So let's run that. And the average of this is two. Of course, I gave you a simple one, but you, can, you guys can try it out um, on your own too. Another very useful function is the print function. 
So eye chunks display outputs to the screen, except in very specific cases. For example, they do not display code that's inside the function's body and in what's called loops. And we're going to cover that later. So you don't have to worry about that for now. So this is when you can use the print function. The print function displays its arguments to the screen, just like the R chunks, but it works in all cases. And not to continue to repeat myself, but it works particularly inside functions and inside loops. I'll add another R chunk and which we're just going to create a simple function. Actually, I'll copy it from what I have because it's a little long. Uh, we've already seen how to define functions, so I just copy and paste. So we have this function that's called numbers and it just has one, two, and three in there. And if we run that, we're only going to see three, right? We're, it's only going to display the number that it returns, but we can change this and I'll copy. Actually, that's not copy. We just fill that in here. So we'll use the print function here uh, with the argument as one first, and then the print function again with the argument two. And this time when we run it, we're going to see all three numbers. So this is really, really useful when you're debugging because when you write this like long function that has many, many lines of code and it's only like the last thing that is gonna be displayed, um, how do you know what's where something is going wrong? So that's when you need like the print function. You can print every little step that you wanna print, see the output for each step, and then you can determine, okay, this is the point where things went wrong and then you can correct it. I think this is like the most used function in programming for probably all the languages. Uh, they don't all call it the print function, but something that does the same thing is very, very popular. So the last one that we should cover is the return function. So the return, if you remember from a couple of minutes ago, <laughs> I say that uh, functions return values to us. So in other words, they give us some output, but it's only the last evaluated expression. But you can use the return function to return whatever you want inside the function. So I'll give an example here with our numbers function. Actually, let me go back and just uh, copy that again. <laughs> and uh, we'll create another R chunk and I'll paste that in. So we've got print here, print there, and we've got three. So what is gonna return always is, is three here. And how do we see that? Uh, let's add another R chunk and we'll create a variable for this so we see what's stored in it. So what's in here? So we're going to assign numbers. Oh, oops, there we go. Numbers uh, there. And I'll just delete this because we're we're calling it anyway. So let's run that. So we've defined our numbers function and let's run here. So what's in here? We've got three. Um, it's always going to return this last one. But what if I want to return two instead? Let's change this print function to return. So let's run it and see what's going to be stored in here. It's now two. So we now have uh, successfully returned something that's not the last item in the function. But you need to know something about using the return function. When this is run, nothing else under it is going to be run. Like the function assumes we're done. Like if I'm giving you something, you don't need anything else after this. So you have to be careful. And we're done. This is most of what we need to know about functions. Congratulations, everybody. Like we can do a lot more now, especially with these uh, built-in functions, because there's a lot of them that we can just use out of the box. So just to recap, We've learned about functions, which are reusable blocks of code 
that perform a particular task. So you have to define, aka create a function before you can call it. And we've covered all that syntax beforehand of what to do and all functions give us back some number or data or specific value. And we can store that value in variables and we can use it in calculations like, just like we do in numbers. We've learned a lot about functions only in numbers because that's all we know right now. That's the only data type that we know, but all the same rules apply to other data types. And I've said this probably three times in the past videos, but we're finally going to learn about other data types. So stay tuned in the next video. See you there. Bye.